you're on your way to work and you're feeling a bit peckish, so you call into the dairy for a bit of a snack. Pies. Definitely get a pie. Might get the office some chocolate as well. Oh, I need a drink. Oh, feed your kombucha. Yum. I'll oh, grab some chips as well. Grab two packs. And then when you go to pay, there's a pesky surcharge. The only way around it is to swipe your FPOS card or insert your debit card, pretend you know what account it is, and then remember your PIN. Or you just can't be bothered with all of that and you just stomach the cost. So then you leave feeling brassed off an inconvenience that you've had to pay a fee to use your own money. So why does this surcharge exist? Let's start with how FPOS works. Stop one is you swiping your card and entering your PIN, which sends it to the second stop, which is called the switch. This is operated by either Worldline, formerly Paymark, or Verifone. They send it to stop number three, which is your bank, to check you've got enough money. And if you do, it pings it back through the switch to stop number four, which is a clearing system. And at the end of each day, the shop's money is totaled and then settled at stop number five, which is the bank's bank, which is the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Now there are two costs for the shop. For stop one, they pay a terminal hire fee of around 40 bucks a month per terminal. For stop number two, they pay a monthly connection fee of around $20, and that's for unlimited transactions. The customer's bank, at stop number three, they pay a switch fee for the process. All up, the cost of FBOS to shops, it's around 0.1 to 0.2%, which is so marginal, it's not passed on to you. If you use your MasterCard or Visa debit by inserting or swiping and pinning, it also uses that same system, so there's no surcharge. But if you're paying with credit card or contactless with credit or debit, there's a whole other complex process. At stop number one, you swipe and pin, insert and pin, or you sign or tap and go, and just like FPOS, the info heads to stop number two, which gets switched to stop number three, the shop's bank. It gets recognised there as a Visa or MasterCard payment and a request for money gets sent to them at stop number four. Now they forward the request anywhere in the world to stop number five, which is the customer's bank, this is your bank, to ensure there's money available. And if there is, it goes to stop number six, a clearing system, which tells the bank's bank at stop number seven, that's the reserve bank, to settle the transaction. But there are costs along that journey for stop one and stop two. There's the terminal and connection fees. They're the same as the FPOS ones. At stop number three, the shop must pay its bank a merchant service fee. At stop number four, the scheme providers are paid a fee by both banks and that's offset by incentives, all of this though commercially sensitive. At stop number five, your bank charges the shop's bank what's called an interchange fee to process the transaction. And if you're paying with Apple Pay, your bank has to pay Apple a fee as well. All up, the cost of this to shops is anywhere between 1.2 to 3.5%. So there's more stops along the journey, more players involved, more fees involved, and no one wanting to absorb the cost, which leaves it to us, the consumer, having to pay it via the surcharge, and that's easy to pass on. But surcharges vary wildly at different places, and that's for a number of reasons. Differing merchant service fee rates, default terminal settings, ignorance, or sometimes intentionally making it higher than it should be. But it's actually cheaper than cash. It costs an average of 4.1% per transaction for a retailer to process cash. And that's compared to 2.3% for credit or contactless. But you'd never pay a cash surcharge. What's most infuriating about all of this is that no one can tell me who's making money from the surcharges. Visa and MasterCard say they're not. The banks say they're not. Retailers say they're just recuperating a cost. Whatever it is, consumers lose and inconvenience wins.